Our patient here was a 63-year-old white male with no significant medical findings. He takes no medication and appears to have no medical contraindications or limitation for dental implant therapy. He has been edentulous in the maxilla for more than 15 years. Although his conventional maxillary complete denture has serviced him well, he desires increased function and chewing ability. Over time, the denture also needed to be relined as bone loss occurred. So let's look at the step-by-step -step process. We have a CT, now what do we do? The first thing we need to do is evaluate the edentulous maxilla. And we're going to evaluate the, the surgical placement of dental implants using our CT diagnostics and a surgical guide which is fabricated by Glidewell Lab. Here in figure one and figure two, we're doing an evaluation of the edentulous maxilla intraorally and radiographically. And our evaluation appears to demonstrate adequate bone width and height for eventual dental implant placement and fabrication of a palateless or horseshoe shaped maxillary overdenture. The patient desires a stable palateless prosthesis which will reduce the gagging reflex and improve taste sensations since we have taste buds on the roof of our mouth. Figure three and four show the patient's properly fitting and aesthetic conventional maxillary complete denture, which was duplicated to create a stable radiographic guide. Six to eight radiographic gutta percha markers are positioned in three-dimensional planes. These gutta percha markers are important in determining precise virtual placement of the toes and dental implants using the eventual CT scanning software uh, that was used. So what we did is we took his existing, properly fitting, conventional maxillary denture and we duplicated it in a duplicator. And from this, our dental laboratory made a CT guide with six to eight gutta percha markers in three different planes. Figure five, demonstrates the CT scan, which allows for virtual placement of the dental implants in ideal bone angulation and depth for proper parallelism. The implant width and length are predetermined prior to any surgical intervention. Glidewell Lab can help with this computer-aided design, but the practicing dentist gives the final approval of the positioning. Figure six, shows the CT scan which allows for visualization of the actual bone morphology so we can see any defects or bone uh, contours uh, that we need to deal with. Figure seven, with the computer aided design, a surgical guide is fabricated to replicate how the implant was virtually placed prior to the actual surgical intervention. This was all done by our laboratory. A precise acrylic surgical guide with occlusal sleeve openings will direct the subsequent drill preparation and dental implant placement. But the surgical guide needs to be seated completely and is anchored to prevent movement during the osteotomy preparation. This is done with the use of stabilizing facial pins that engage the labial aspect of bone approximately three to five millimeters. In the video, we'll demonstrate the placement of these pins. Figure 11 and video two show a guiding sleeve placed into the original sleeve for the 2.2 diameter pilot drill. The 2.2 pilot drill key is used to position that 2.2 pilot drill. This allows for accurate angulation and depth which is critical with using this primary drill. Figure 12 and video three show the next step drill that we use, the osteotomy drill, which is a 2.8 diameter drill. We use a 2.8 diameter drill key, which will help guide this 2.8 millimeter diameter drill. Figure 13 and video three show the use of a tissue punch, which is used to remove soft tissue from the surgical site preventing any possible contamination of the osteotomy. This drill does not require a drill key as the opening in the surgical guide is the same diameter 
of the final predetermined implant body. Figure 14 and video 4 will show the desired implant which is then ratcheted to the predetermined depth using the stable surgical guide. So we actually place the implant through the surgical guide and uh, torque the implant into proper position. And remember, this was all virtually determined prior to any surgical intervention. Figure 15 shows all four of the dental implants and shows them that they are precisely placed by the computer-aided virtual design of the surgical guide. Figure 16 and 17 are radiographs of the ideally placed dental implants. Evaluation of the maxillary right and left periapical radiographs demonstrate ideal positioning of the four parallel dental implants. These implants were virtually placed to be parallel, surgically placed to be parallel, which gives us a much better final aesthetic result with our attachments. The surgical guide was removed after extraction of the stabilizing pins. Note, there is virtually no bleeding following implant placement and the labial pin placement. It's a very atraumatic surgery for our patient. Figures 19 and video 6 show the conventional panoramic radiograph showing proper positioning of the dental implants. You can see that they are very parallel, which will give us um, very good retention of our attachments. Figure 20 shows that following proper integration of the dental implants, which was about four months, a conventional polysiloxane impression was made using impression copings. Radiographs are used to verify complete seating to the top of the implants. Whenever we have metal-to-metal -metal components, it's, it's critical that you take a radiograph to ensure a complete seating of your impression copings. Figure 21 shows an accurate impression made using the indirect technique, and it exhibits no voids or distortions. Quality impressions provide for an accurate master cast. Your dental laboratories will require quality final impressions. The dental lab, in this situation Glidewell Lab, fabricates stable record bases and occlusal rims, and we do our conventional uh, denture fabrication. Conventional dentures techniques are used to create an aesthetic denture. So we do try-ins and we make sure that the patient is happy with the results while in wax. The metal framework provides reinforcement and resistance to fracture for the horseshoe-shaped implant retained overdentures. I prefer to have a metal framework, a metal mesh framework in my horseshoe-shaped overdentures for long-term stability. If you just make it out of acrylic, the maxilla will flex a little bit, and sometimes you will see fracturing or, or cracking of the horseshoe-shaped overdenture. So use a wire mesh to reinforce it. In this situation, locator attachments from Zest Anchor uh, were used to provide the retention of the overdenture. Figure 26 show the correct height of locator attachments and they're placed in the master cast. Height is determined by the interocclusal space and soft tissue thickness. The attachment is actually about a millimeter and a half super crestal, super tissue crestal, um, not to the bone, but to the soft tissue. So you want the locators to be about a millimeter and a half above the soft tissue. Figure 27 show the locator attachments, which were torqued to approximately 20 newton centimeters and this ensures proper tightness and resistance to unthreading. The implants are in ideal position. The retentive male locator attachments are placed in the palletless implant retained maxillary complete denture. These locators are available in different colors indicating different levels of retention. And they are very easily changed if needed over time. And normally the attachments are changed about once a year. Figures 29 and 30 show the palletless implant retained maxillary complete denture placed in the mouth. It is stable and functional. The patient was pleased with the natural looking final prosthesis. His quality of life was improved. He had tremendously increased masticatory ability. 
so form and function are definitely improved. Figure 31 illustrates the post-operative CT scan, and it shows that the implants are indeed in an ideal position, and it mimics precisely the virtual placement of the implants done prior to any surgical intervention. So here we illustrated what the step-by-step -step process is once we do a CT. And I hope this helps in your future treatment planning and surgical and prosthetic use of dental implants.